How's it going my truant people, Dr. Slacking the Slacking Doctor back with the team builder for week 10 of the UBL. This is the final week of the regular season of the Ultimate Battle League. Battler League? Battle League. Don't know, forgotten already. Regardless, it's the final week. We haven't done a team builder since week 6 uh, because the teams that we've been building have been hastily thrown together or have been more heat sets if you like. Uh, but this week we have a slightly more serious team for two reasons. One, this game really, really affects playoff standings at the lower end of the bracket. Uh, we're going up against my man Silver Beanie and his Crystal Palisans, I think it is. After Crystal Palace, of course, a uh, fellow Brit. But uh, if we beat, if we lose to him, he takes the final spot in playoffs, I believe. Uh, and if we uh, beat him, then he won't be in playoffs. So. Whilst obviously I don't want to put this man out of playoffs, I also don't want to lose to him because I haven't taken it seriously when I have beaten several of his direct rivals for those playoff spots this season because I was taking those games seriously. It would seem somehow unfair if he ended up ahead of them because I didn't treat this game as seriously as I treated the games against them. Uh, I, if you see what I'm saying, I just don't, I don't know, it doesn't sit right with me doing that. So, taking this one a little bit more seriously, uh, still not quite as prepared as we would have been in the first sort of... Five, six weeks of the season uh, because we haven't, I haven't done any mocks or anything like that and no one else has looked at this team. However, I did sit down and look at this team in some depth and did spend some time on my own working on it. Uh, so yeah, it should still be an okay team. I'm not the worst team builder on my own. I'm not the best, but I'm not the worst. So anyway, regardless, let, let's look at this uh, man's draft. He has the Garchomp, Tapu Fini, the Z Araquanid, Dan Manitan, Porygon 2, the Z Torn I, Zoroark, Sil Valley, Hitmontop, Cray, Dilly, Manetric. Really weird choice of Z users here for me. Uh, I feel like the Torn finds the user, uh, but I can. I think if I'm remembering correctly, Zoroark is the same amount of points as Raikouni. I would have made Zoroark second Z probably, uh, or even just would have had Z Garchomp and nothing else. Although I'm not a fan of one Z user, so I probably would have gone Torn and Zoroark. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he had to go that route. Uh, I don't know. Raikouni feels like having one Z user anyway because it doesn't use Z in my head. But maybe I'm proven wrong in this game. I've watched quite a few of his battles this season. Decent battler, had a decent season, uh, really entertaining content creator, does live comms, so definitely would recommend checking out his battle tomorrow when they go up, uh, his side of our game of course, uh, but yeah, really, really, really nice guy by uh, all measures that I've seen, and uh, we are playing this one a little bit late because he had to go away and stuff, but he's been pretty cool about scheduling and stuff, so that's always nice. So regardless, let's look at the first one that we are bringing, and this is, uh, I built this team about... I want to say a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, uh, probably about a week and a half ago because we have had to delay, as I've said, uh, and we haven't played the game yet. So this is one of the few times I'm doing a team builder having not played the game. Uh, but because I built this a little while ago, my memory of these sets a little bit hazy. Oh, also, I got new glasses. Got new glasses. So tell me they look nice. If you made it this far, pass me rambling. I don't even know who watches five minutes into my team builders. But if you did, tell me you like my glasses, please. First Mon, Wukong the Infernape. Uh, this is one of the sets that I very much remember building. So... If you look at his team, Tapu Fini and Araquanid uh, are two. Do I have my glasses case here to wipe them? No, they're a little bit, uh, a little bit dusty, uh, despite being new. Yeah, if you look at the Araquanid and the Tapu Fini, they're the kind of the major checks to Wukong. Uh, so I'm expecting them to pivot in on me as I go for the Swords Dance, and then I'm going to hit them with that big Thunder Punch. We have the Pasho Berry there to be able to take a hit from both. Um, if the Fini is running a Resist Berry for me, I would imagine it's more likely to be like a Kebia Berry, predicting the Gunk Shot. Um, but, you know, it could be Wakan. Same with Raikun, it could be Wakan, but I don't have a great electric type on my team other than a Rotom Wash, which I don't think either of them is going to run a Wakan Berry for. I find it unlikely. It's possible, but neither of them particularly kill Rotom, so that's why I feel like isn't they're not effective lures that way. Um, so I think it would be pretty free to SD and then T-Punch. We might have to, uh, I doubt we'll necessarily Oko, depending on the spreads, so we might have to take a Surf... Uh, slash a liquidation, and which is why we have the Pasho Berry, basically, because we're not a Z on this Infernate, we can't just run uh, Electrium Z and nuke something, but uh, with Flare Blitz plus close, plus close combat, we hit the rest of this man's team. If I can keep this thing around, you know, if I take a, a Surf, for example, with my Pasho Berry and I get the T-Punch off, uh, and I can keep it around to kill the Porygon 2 later with another close combat, uh, that would be really, really nice. So I don't necessarily want to just sack this thing as soon as it takes 70% or 50% or whatever with the Pasho Berry. Like, I want to try and uh, keep it around and preserve it to later to hit the Zoroark and the Porygon, Porygon especially, and Cray Dilly if that comes. Um, but in particular, I want this to break through, hopefully, the Araquanid over the Finny. But either of these, breaking through them would be really, really great for some of my late game ones, which we'll get onto later, but because they are two of his best defensive kind of checks. And then the second one on the team, we have Onigawara, and this, again... 
if we can break either the Finny, especially the Finny, but either the Finny or the Arachnid, if we can break that with Wukong, then Onigawara just goes crazy here, right? Banded Drain Punch, we can take something like an Earthquake from Chomp if it's unboosted, and Drain Punch all of that back with the Banded Drain Punch. Uh, we can take hits from pretty much everything on this team, like nothing super Oko is a bulky panda, uh, and we just Drain Punch it all right back, so... Yeah, this thing really goes crazy. Banded knockoff also looks very threatening. If we get this thing on Porygon 2 and we click Banded knockoff, if we've baited in the Finny successfully with Wukong, then something dies to Banded knockoff. Essentially, I guess the Hitmontop would be his best switching, but that thing's got no recovery if we knock off his leftovers, so that's not bad either. So yeah, I really feel like only Guara can go crazy again. We're using this kind of double fighting type core that we've been bringing in the past few weeks. Um, I picked up on the draft earlier in the season. Uh, I don't think it's that easy to shoehorn onto every team. I don't think, you know, it's something that every matchup um, demands. But when it comes through, it works really, really well. So hopefully this is one of those games where it can do that. Uh, then them on the team, we have Crystal the Palisand. Uh, of course, named after my Man of Silver Beanie's team, the Crystal Palisands. Um, and this thing is basically just designed to take on, like, Darmanitan and Garchomp primarily. I did consider running HP Ice on it, as well as the Mega Manetric as well. It really is just a good blanket check for a lot of things on this team, being able to eat physical hits with that high base 110 physical defense. And Manetric not really having any coverage to hit at HP Ice being the best way of hitting it, which isn't that great when it's invested. So uh, I feel like Crystal really can do a fantastic job of just getting rocks up and being obnoxious. Earth Power plus Toxic hits my opponent's whole team um, because they don't have a good flying type torn eye. Yeah, I, I don't think it's the best flying type. If I'm honest, I don't think it's the best Mon. So if I can get Rock up and I can just start Toxic and things, uh, my man's removal is a Tapu Fini and a Tornadus. Um, again, not necessarily the best removal. One thing to note is that if the Misty Terrain does come up, then we're not going to have Toxic things, um, which does mean the Guard Chomp can potentially set up on us a little bit easier. Uh, but I believe we have enough special attack investment to break a Tank Chomp sub. Um, so we should be fine. We shouldn't be too many issues there. P2 would be the annoying one that could come in and recover on me with Misty Terrain up, but it can only do that for so long before Mr. Train goes down. And the fourth one on the team we have here is Warren, and this is the one that really appreciates having that Araquanid and that Tapu Fini broken down, because Scarf Warren here, uh, Scarf Return slash Scarf Earthquake can really rip through my opponent's team, especially once rocks go up, that Scarf Earthquake is going to hit so hard. Pranks to Thunder Wave on Tornadus means that you can't slow down my Scarfer, um, because of course we're a ground type. I could have also run Sharpedo in a similar fashion, because that's immune to Pranks and Moves, uh, but in this case, I just felt like Scarf Diggersby could really come through in this game for us. Uh, if you look at my opponent's team, where are their normal resists, right? It just kind of punches a massive hole. Uh, and let's see Cray Dilly or Savali Steel comes. But against double fighting type, I feel like both of those are really, really threatened. So return spam just looks immense in this game. So hopefully we can bait in the bulky mons in Finny or Aquanid and we can break through the others in P2 and Cray Dilly if they do come with our fighting breakers. But yeah, I feel like Warren will really, really go in this game. Speaking of that Cray Dilly, uh, my opponent's grass type being part uh, rock means that Storm looks pretty good in this matchup too. My opponent's uh, grass resist is Darmanitan, and that's not a really great grass resist. I mean, there's a Tornai again, I keep forgetting about that thing, but again, it's just not the bulkiest, it's not the best in my opinion. Uh, so looking at my opponent's team, unless they bring a Silvalli typing, uh, their, their grass resist are Darmanitan, which takes 25 from rocks, and then takes, mm, it's not that bulky, so it's gonna take a lot from a Meadow, plated, uh, meadow Plate boosted energy ball, uh, and then the Cray Dilly, which, no, sorry, the Cray Dilly, the Tornadus, which gets nuked after rocks in this as well. So I really felt like this could go in. Uh, if we can break through the Cray Dilly with this, potentially, depending on if he's like Fizz Def or whatever. Um, and we can knock off the P2. And I think that's the most crucial bit of this set, is that realistically, looking at my opponent's team, what will there be? What will their switch in be? It'll be P2, because P2 soaks this up easily. That's 77 special attack from Rimsicott. We're not... We're not hitting a lot that hard. Uh, so I think when the P2 comes in to try and sponge the hits and we get that thing knocked off, that would definitely catch my opponent off guard. And then that means, again, that that return from Diggersby suddenly hits that P2 so much harder and is a lot bigger threat in the end game. So that's the kind of thinking there as well. If we can't break it with our fighting types, let's break it with our grass type. So... The final one on the team is Bosch, the Rotom Wash. Here is just a defensive pivot, really. This thing also takes on Guard Chomp to help support the Palisand and free that up for things like Darmanitan and uh, Mega Manetric. Uh, this thing can come in on the Earthquakes from Guard Chomp pretty easily. We are Fizz Death Leftover set. Uh, we can protect, potentially break Outrage and things like that. Um, and HP Ice, of course, is going to nuke Guard Chomp really, really hard and protect as well. Guess there's extra turns of Leftovers Recovery now because it isn't Z Guard Chomp. We don't need to protect the Scout for the Z, which is pretty nice. But we can do on something like Torn Eye because we can switch it on Torn Eye as a Hurricane. And then if it's running something like uh, 
I don't know, Phytanium is something that Taunty runs a lot. Uh, I don't know, anything like that. Gracium, it could run Grass Knot with the uh, Gracium Z. If it wants to run something like that to hit us, we can click the Protect to scout out for that. As it happens, Grass Knot is really, really low base power against Rotom. But regardless, we can still scout for the Gracium if we want to do that or anything else that we think it might have. So again, this is just another kind of blanket check along with the Palisand. These two, those two together uh, form a really, really nice defensive core. One that pivots around and one that gets rocks up for us. So I'm pretty happy with this. It's a very offensive build. Uh, we're going to try and break through as early as possible with Wukong plus Oni Gawara, and then hopefully just clean up the game with Warren at the end. So, hopefully you guys enjoy this, having a team builder back. Like I say, I'm sorry that we haven't had any for a few weeks. Uh, we will have a uh, break week after this, before playoffs starts. Everyone gets a break week. Obviously, we are already locked for playoffs, but if we can win this game, we will secure the top seed in the division, depending on how other uh, week 10 results go. So, Fingers crossed, you know, never know, some people might do us some favours, but we've got to go out and win this and at least try and fight for top speed seed or as high a seed as we possibly can. So, thank you so much for loafing around with me, guys. I hope you're looking forward to this battle, and I'll catch you again next time.